Okay, we're looking at the CCEA Mathematics M4 paper, and it's from May 2018. So let's take a wee look then at question number one. Best Bank offers a three-year investment account with a fixed compound interest rate of 1.75% per annum. Mr. Lucas invests 8,000 in this account. What's the value of his investment at the end of the three-year period? Lots of different ways of doing this one. We can go slowly or quickly. Uh, but if we just go one year, two year, three years, and we'll see how we get on. Um, so it's £8,000. If you want to go the slow way, we could work out 1%. And that would be £80, and then we need 1.75%, and that then is going to be £140. So after one year, uh, Mr. Lucas has 8140 in his account. We do the same then, so we now find 1% of this and multiply by 1.75 and add it on. So then at the end of the two years, I'll do a slightly quicker method here in my calculator, but that's okay. So it is 8140 multiplied by... So at the end of the two years then, he should have 828245. So what did I do there? You find 1% of this, 1.75% of this, and add it on then to the original amount. Number three, sorry, third year. And then we get 842739. So at the end of the three years, his investment is worth eight thousand four hundred and twenty seven pounds and thirty nine P question two last year a company spent a total of two thousand four hundred pounds on advertising this year they spent two thousand seven hundred and ninety six what was the percentage increase in their spending on advertising so we want to work out the increase first of all so it's two seven nine six take away two thousand four hundred and that gives us 396. Then as a percentage, we have 396 divided by 2,400 multiplied by 100%, and we get 16.5%. Um, solve the equation P plus 15 equals 2 upon 4P minus 3. First thing we need to do is multiply our bracket. Two times the minus three then is minus six. I would then want to try and get rid of the smallest letter. So smallest letter here is P, so I'm going to take away P from both sides. That gives me 15 equals 7P, take away six. I then want to try and get this P on its own, so I'm going to add six to both sides. That gives me 21 is 7P, and of course then dividing by seven, I get three equals P. So P is 3, and in here we write, of course, then that P is 3. Question 4. Sue is training to complete a 10km walk. A diagram of her local athletics track is shown below. This track consists of a rectangle and two semicircles. How many complete laps are needed to ensure that she walks 10 kilometers so we need to work out the distance around this track i hope you can see it's 150 and 150 and then add this semicircle and this semicircle but it's just like adding a full circle if that makes sense because it's going to be this one plus this one so our circle then our circumference is going to be pi d and so it's going to be pi then and the circumference i hope you can see then is going to be 50 so it's going to be pi times 50 um, or those two other bits. So that's going to give us 157 if you want 0 0.0796. Uh, that's this distance plus this distance, and we need to add then 150 plus 150. So 157.0796 plus 300. That gives us 457. 0.0796 that's the distance around the track and we need to divide that into then 10,000 
because that's how many meters she's trying to cover. If we do that, we get 21.8, and so if she goes around it 20, um, if she goes around it 21.8 times, she'll get her 10,000. So she's a complete lap she's looking for. So it would have to be then 22. Question five: At a concert, forty percent of the audience are children. One third of the rest of the audience are men. There are 120 women in the audience. Work out the total number of people in the audience. So we have 40% are children. That means 60% then make up the rest. And so a third of the rest are men. So a third of this. So that means we have 20% men. And it means then it must be 40% are women. And that equals 120. So if 40% is 120, we need 100%. You can find 1%, of course, which would be 3, and then 100%. So let's do that. 1% is 120 divided by 40, which is 3. Of course, you could just find 10% if you want, or 20% times it by 5. But our 100% then is going to be 300. So our answer to that one then is 300. Question six, a cylindrical tank has a diameter of 80 centimetres and a height of 150 centimetres as shown. Calculate the volume of water the tank can hold when full. So we need to work out our volume here. So we're going to find the area of this and times it then by our height. So it's going to be pi r squared times h. That's going to be our volume. So it's going to be pi times, if that's 80, that means it's going to be 40 squared and that's times n by 150. If we put that into our calculator, we get 753982.24, I think somewhere in around there. So that's gonna be centimeters cubed, and in terms of liters, then we're gonna divide by a thousand. So that's gonna give us then 754 liters. So that's gonna be seven, Five, four. The curved surface area of the tank, so that's this bit once it's been folded out. I hope we realise then if you fold this out, it's like taking the label off a can of beans or something like that. It's just going to give you then a rectangle. So what a dimension is going to be 150 high, and then that's the same then as our circumference. So to work out our circumference, it's going to be pi d. And then once we get our pi d, so our pi d is pi times 80. And once we get that, then we're times by our area. So we want the curved surface area. So it's going to be pi times 80 times n by the height, which is 150. And that ends up giving you 37700 centimetres squared. Question 7. Peter, John and Matthew are three brothers. Peter is 10 years old. John is X years old. Matthew is a year younger than twice John's age. The mean of their age is a seven. Work out John's age. So we have Peter, who is 10. We have John, who is X. And then we have Matthew. Twice John's age is 2X, and it's a year younger than that, so it's 2X minus one. If the mean of their ages is seven, then their total of their ages must be seven times three, which is 21. Uh, work out John's age. So it's going to be the three of them added together. Give 21. So we have 2x minus 1 plus x plus 10 gives 21. That means 3x plus 9 is 21. That means 3x is 12 and x then is 4. John is x years old. It says up here and work out John's age. We've worked out that x is 4. So John is 4 years old. Question 8. Which average mean, mode or median would be most suitable for each set of data? Explain your choice. The data is fairly evenly spread but there is one extreme value at the upper end. Um, 
here the probably the median is going to be the best and um, because the mean is going to be affected by the extreme value at the upper end okay by extreme value Uh, one value appears much more frequently than the others, and it does not at the upper or lower end of the data. Well, that sounds then like the mode that they're looking for. Because um, it is the most common result. Represents data the best. Okay, question nine. Um, a school timetable is being arranged. The day can be arranged in 30 minute classes or 50 minute classes or 60 minute classes. No matter which of these choices is made, the total daily teaching time will be the same. Ignoring the time for break or lunch, what is the daily teaching time? So one's gonna go up in 30s, one's gonna go up in 50s, and one's gonna go up in 60s, and we need to see kind of whenever they meet again, if that makes sense. Now, 30 and the 60 is a bit of a strange one because any time, anything that 60 goes into, 30 will go into as well. So we just really need to compare these two. You can do it by highest common factor, lowest common multiple, and do product of primes, but I'm just gonna go up in 60s and see whenever 50 fits into it. So 50 doesn't go into 60. Next multiple of 60 is 120. 50 doesn't go into 120. 180, no good. 240, 300, and of course 50 goes into 330. Of course, then we'll go into 300 as well. So ignoring what's the daily teaching time, so it's gonna be 300 minutes. And if you want, then that's gonna be five hours. Question 10, solve this equation. Show your work and clearly solution by trial and proof will not be accepted. Uh, we want to try and get rid of the fractions as soon as possible here. And our best plan to do is to make everything over 6. You could multiply 3 by 6. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. But I'm going to change everything here so it's all with a denominator then of 6. And then we'll take it from here. So I'm going to leave the times top and bottom of this part here by 2. That gives me 4x minus 2 over 6. Top and bottom of this one needs to be multiplied by 3, so that gives me 3x plus 6 over 6 plus x over 6 equals 8. The trick for that is now once we multiply through everything by 6, then the fraction should disappear, which should make our life a bit easier. If I times this by 6, I get 4x minus 2 plus 3x plus 6 plus x and don't forget to times the right hand side then by 6 and it gives us 48. Uh, tidying this up I get 7x, sorry I don't, I get 8x, 4x, the 3x and the x plus 4 is 48, 8x is 44 and x then is going to be five and a half. Uh, question 11, factorize y squared minus 6y plus 8. This one's not too bad. It doesn't have any number here in front of the y squared, so we can just go straight ahead and do it. We're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give 8, and the same two numbers add to give us minus 6. So they have to be minus 2 and minus 4. So it's going to be y minus 2 on y minus 4. Often good to check this to make sure you've got the right answer. Let's do FOIL for this. y times y is y squared outer minus 4y inner minus 2y and last plus 8. So sure enough we tidy that up it becomes then our minus 6 and then minus 2 times minus 4 does indeed give us a rate. So that's our answer. So y minus 2 upon y minus 4. Question 12, a man 
has mass 74 kilograms and a sun has mass 42 kilograms both measure to the nearest kilogram what's the maximum difference in mass between the man and the sun that's going to be 74.5 is as high as we can go with that and then make the sun as light as possible 41.5 if we take those away then we get 33 so the answer is in 33 kilograms all right the composite shape consists of a right angled isosceles triangle that's this here and the semicircle so that the area of the composite shape is approximately 1.285 meters squared so we need to first find the area of this triangle but we also need to find the area of the semicircle and we we need to work out then the diameter here um, so the diameter is going to be if we use pythagoras because this is a one as well so one and one would then give us that so if we go uh, if I go for A, B and C here first of all, so it's going to be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, and I get C squared, and the C then is the square root of 2, which is 1.4142, so that is going to be my distance there. Um, area of the triangle, that's a 1 and that's a 1, so it's half the base times the height is going to be a half times 1 times 1, which is going to again give me a half, and then the area of my semicircle, if we do a full circle, it's getting a wee bit messy here, but we're okay, area then is pi r squared. Um, so we would have, let me see, we'll work out then the half circle, so area of half circle would then be a half times pi, and my r then is half of this, which is if you take half of this, just do it in your calculator, you get 0 0.707, sorry I've gone off the side, which I really shouldn't here, uh, but that's okay, and we put that in, we get 0 0.785. So my total area then is going to be a half plus 0.785. And that gives me 1.285 then as required. Find the force applied to the area of the compass's shape when the pressure is 5 newton meters squared. So that's going to be our force then is 5 times 1.285. And that gives me 6.43. A rectangle and a square have the same length of diagonal. So this distance here must be the same as this distance here. Calculate the length of the side of the square. So we're going to use this and find the length of the diagonal here first of all. And we're going to use trigonometry for that. So let's take this triangle here. If this is our angle, that's O. That's A and that's H. So we have A and we want H, so we're going to be using cos. So it's cos X equals A over H. Cos 53.13 equals 9 over H. And rearranging that, if you multiply through by H and then divide by cos 53.13, you'll get H is 9 over, sorry, that's cos. 53.13 um, that gives me uh, let me see 9 divided by cos 53.13 uh, 14.99996 so I'm happy enough fourth decimal place there so that's then going to be 15.0 so that is Let's go back up here so you can see that's 15. So that is 15 and we need to work out the side. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can use Pythagoras because those are both the same so we could work it out. But I think nearly a more straightforward way is to realise it is a square so that needs to be 45 and that then is 15. So if we use either sine or cos, when we use cos again we can work out this is our A and this is our H. This is O so we're going to go for cos x equals a over h 
cos 45 equals a over 15. a is equal to 15 times cos 45 and our answer then turns out to be 10.6. Question 15. Factorise fully 4q squared minus r squared. This is a um, uh, difference of two squares. So if we set up our brackets, 4q squared, so it's going to be 2q take away r and 2q plus r. Question 16. Uh, the lines STR and BCR are tangents to the circle as shown. Um, RTC is 47 and ADC is 94. John proved that the lines AC and SR are parallel. He used the following proof but didn't give his reasons. Use the properties of tangents and circle theorems to complete John's argument. Angle RCT. So where is RCT? RCT I think is 47. The reason for that is that's a tangent and it touches here. That's a tangent that touches here. So it means that those two sides then are the same length. Um, so we can say because T R C is isosceles because of the tangents. Question two, RTC. RTC is the same as TAC. And that's then because of the alternate segment theorem. Hopefully you can see that. RTC and ATC. And that's because of the segment theorem. Angle ATC is 86 because let's go back up here ATC is 86 this here is a cyclic quadrilateral TCDA and so opposite side opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180 so if we go for cyclic opposite angles add to 180 Angle STA is 47. STA is 47. The reason for that, that's a straightforward one. There's a straight line, all three angles add to 180. Line equal 180. And then so AC and SR are parallel because, so there's SR and there is AC and they're parallel because, do you see the alternate rule working here? Um, because alternate angles, um, because, so that's, what are those two angles? STA and the other one is TAC. Or alternate. And that gets us that. Question 17. The table gives information about the weights of 75 um, children. Physics teachers will be angry here because weight shouldn't be in um, kilograms, but that's okay. We'll leave it there. Um, we need to work out, if we're doing a histogram, we of course need to work out frequency density. Don't be plotting frequency up the side. We need to find frequency density. So we do um, the frequency divided by the size of each group. I've extended this out here to add my extra column. Some people add another column on, which is the width, saying the size of each group. Feel free to do that as well if it helps. But this is 18 divided by 10, and the 10 comes from the 30, take away 20. So my frequency density for that one is 1.8. This then is going to be 15 divided by 6, which is 2.5. This is 14 divided by 4. That gives me 3.5. This is 22 divided by 10, which is 2.2. And then this is 6 divided by 5. Um, 
it's not, it's 6 divided by 15, which then gives me 0.4. So those are going to be the heights that I go up at the side. Now I've got myself ahead here very slightly. I know my frequency density goes as high as 3.5, so I split it up that way. And then I'm going from 20 here all the way up to 65. Some people like to have one of these here in because we're not quite starting at zero. Starting there at 20 and we go then from there. Uh, let's pick the, the highest one. So it's going to be 36 to 40 is going to be 3.5. So that goes up to there. And I think that's my 36 to 40. Feel free just to start with the first one. I always like starting with the highest one. Uh, 2.5 is 30 to 36. So I'll go from there. One point eight is twenty to thirty. Two point two is forty to fifty. And then not point four is fifty to sixty five. So that's my histogram drawn there. Uh, a couple of things. It should be, of course, a uh, continuous scale along the bottom, and the rest hopefully makes sense. The area of each bar here then represents our frequency. That's the way our histograms work. A stratified sample of 30 children was taken from those whose weight was less than 40 kilograms. Estimate how many of the sample are from the 30 to 36 group. So 30 are taken from anyone less than 40. We go back up to our table here. Anyone less than 40 is that plus that plus that. And those three come then to 47. Uh, and in this group here, the 30 to 36 group, there are 15. So the fraction out of the 47 then is going to be 15 over 47. And we times in that by 30 because there's going to be a sample of 30. Um, in that case, so it's going to be 9.5. It's just over the 9.5 mark, so I'm going to write that down as 10. I think they'll accept 9 there as well on that one. Uh, question 18. Give a reason why a stratified sample is usually better than the random sample. Um, it's just a better representation. Um, of the data. Uh, give a reason why someone might choose to take a random sample rather than a stratified sample. It sounds very lazy, um, but it's easier, um, quicker, or something like that. We'd be fine um, for that. Um, okay, so that's the end of question 18. Right back with you. Question 19. The length of a rectangular field is 20 metres longer than its width. The area of the field is 406.25. By setting up and solving a quadratic equation, find the length of the field in metres. Um, so a quick diagram then of our field. We know our area is 406.25. The length is 20 metres longer than the width. So if we go for x, and then this must be x plus 20. So what does that mean? That means x upon, or x multiplied by x plus 20, gives us 406.25. x squared plus 20x equals 406.25. x squared plus 20x minus 406.25 equals 0. And we're going to solve that quadratic equation. And um, the way I'm going to do it is to use a formula. Not sure if it factorises. Um, A is 1, that's what's multiplied by x squared. B is 20. And C is minus 406.25. Using the formula, again, it's at this formula page at the start of this test. Uh, we have x equals minus b, so it's minus 20, plus or minus the square root of 20 squared, which is 400. Take away 4ac, so 4a is 4, that's easy. And then because that's a minus and it's a minus c, it's actually going to be plus 4 
a power 406.25 all over 2 so 406.25 times by 4 and then we're adding 400 and if we take the square root of that give us something nice it does indeed it gives us 45 so it's minus 20 plus or minus 45 all over 2 um, and if we put those two options we have x is so minus 20 minus 45 is minus 65 so it's either um, where am I going wrong here minus b plus or minus minus 20 All over minus 2, so we should have minus 20 minus 45 all over 2, uh, which gives us minus 32.5. Sorry, I'm losing my mind here, but I think we're good. Um, that doesn't make any sense, so we're going to go for x, then is 12.5, which is our other one. Sorry about that, I was just reading, was reading the wrong thing. Um, so 12.5 then is our answer. So I find the length of the field in metres. Sorry, that's our, that's our 12.5 is going to be our width. I'm having a shocker here. That's 12.5, so I add 20 to that. Um, and it will give me then 32.5. Got there eventually. Simplify x squared minus 4 all over 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. We are hoping the factor on the top is going to be the same as the factor on the bottom, and that will make things cancel out. So we need to factorise this. The top one's different to 2 squares, so that should be straightforward enough. But factorising this, we need to take away the other end. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. I'm looking for two things that multiply to give us minus 6 and the same two things add to give us minus 5. So they're going to be, I think, minus 6 and 1. So I split my middle term. 3x squared minus 6x plus x minus 2. Um, Factorising then the first two terms, I get 3x upon x minus 2 plus 1 upon x minus 2. That means my two factors are 3x plus 1 upon x minus 2. So how does that help us in this question? That means our bottom line factorises to give us 3x plus 1 over x plus 2. On the top then is a difference of two squares, so it's x plus 2 upon x minus 2. That shouldn't be a minus. I've taken that from there, so it's a minus. That cancels with that. And our final answer then is x plus 2 over 3x plus 1. Uh, part B, given x plus 1 upon x minus 1 equals x plus a squared minus 6x minus b, find the values of a and b. We need to write these as ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the difference of two squares, so this one becomes x squared minus 1. This one takes a wee bit of work. Let's go for x plus a all squared. So that's x plus a upon x plus a. That gives me x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. And so that means this is going to become x squared plus 2ax minus 6x plus a squared minus b. If these two things are equal to each other, then the x squareds are equal to the x squareds. The x terms are equal. So if the x terms are equal, then 0, because there's no x term here, must be equal to 2ax minus 6x. Or if you want, 2a equals 6 and a equals 3. And the number terms then, minus 1, must be equal to a squared minus b. 
if we know a is 3 then that's going to be a 9 so it gives us then b is 10 so a gives us 3 and b gives us 10 fairly tough one there to try and work out it's hard to get your head around it these are both quadratics we multiply them out and simplify them this one looks like this this one looks like this work out the x terms that's this bit here no x term here number term is this bit here and we can solve the rest down from there question 21 solve the equation 3 over 3x plus 5 minus 5 over 2x plus 3 equals 2 um, so we need to find a common denominator here so it's going to be 3 upon 2x plus 3 all over 3x plus 5 upon 2x plus 3 take away 5 upon 3x plus 5 all over 3x plus 5 upon 2x plus 3 equals 2 We've made a common denominator so we can join these two together. So I'm going to try and tidy up the top line here while joining them together. So we get 3x plus 5. This is my bottom line. 2x plus 3. I'm joining this together then I get 6x. That's my 6x there. And then plus 9 minus 15x minus 25 and that equals 2. Tidying this up then, I get minus 9x minus 16. That's that line tidied up, and I'm multiplying through then by here. So it's 2, and multiplying it, this bracket gives me 6x squared. Outer is 9x, inner is 10x, so that's plus 19x plus 15. I hope you follow what I've done there. There's a lot going on. Uh, minus 9x minus 16 then equals 12x squared plus 38x plus 30. Get everything then to the one side. I end up with 12x squared adding 9x to both sides plus 47x adding 16 to both sides plus 46 then equals zero. Um, you would do well here to get your thing factorized. It does actually factorize into kind of two nice factors, but I'm just going to use the formula here. So I'm going to let A equals 12, B equals 47, and C is 46. And I'm going to have X equals minus B, so it's minus 47 plus or minus the square root of 47 squared. Take away 4ac, which is 4 upon 12 upon 46, and then that's all over 24, minus 47, plus or minus, so if we go 4 times 12 times 46, that gives us 228, and 47 squared, 2209, so we just end up with a 1 in there, all over 24, minus 47 minus 1, gives us of course, uh, we, need, we should really split this up actually, so if we go for minus 47 minus 1, so it's minus 48 over 24, and that gives us then minus 2, minus 47 plus 1, is minus 46 then over 24 and that cancels to minus 23 over 12 so our answers then are minus 2 that's x equals minus 2 or x equals minus 23 over 12 Question 22, find the equation of the line which is perpendicular to this line and passes through the point 3 minus 5. This we need to rearrange and get it into a form that we like. So I'm going to take the 2y over to this side here and rewrite it then as 2y 
equals 3x plus 6. I hope you see what I've done. Dividing then is going to give me y divide through everything by 2 gives me 3 over 2x plus 3. How does that help me? It means I know the gradient of this is 3 over 2. Therefore, our gradient of the perpendicular is going to be the negative reciprocal of this. So that's going to be minus 2 thirds. Um, that means I know my equation is going to be y equals minus 2 thirds x plus c. And I know that the point 3 minus 5 works for it. So I substitute this in then to find my c. So minus 5 equals minus 2 thirds upon 3 plus c. That means minus 5 minus 2 thirds times 3 then is minus 2 plus c. That gives me a value of c then as minus 3. So the equation then of the line is y equals minus 2 thirds x minus 3. Question 23. A student prepared a frequency table for an experiment involving measuring weights, w and grams again. Um, it should be a Newton, but that's okay. The frequency density for the third group in the table was twice the frequency density for the second group. Find the value of A. How do you find the frequency density for the second group? Well, you would do 9 divided by whatever the size of this is. So that's going to be 9 divided by A take away 10. And what about the frequency density then for this one? It's going to be 27 divided by 25 take away a are they both the same they're not this is the frequency density for the third group is twice the frequency density for the second so here's the second here's the third so if i times this one by two i would then get this one here sorry you couldn't see that for a while uh, if i times three i'm going to get 18 over a minus 10 is 27 25 take away a um, I'm going to what will I do I'll cross multiply here you shouldn't always do that but it works in this case reasonably well the 18 upon 25 take away a is 27 upon a minus 10 I will left myself much space here um, 18 times 25 I think is 450 take away 18a is 27a uh, minus 270. Uh, if I solve that, so how would I solve that? I would add 27a. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I'd add 27a to both sides. Give them a 9a nine, nine here. Sorry, wait, that's two, 270. Wait, go again. I would add 18a to both sides to get this over to here, and then t add 270 to both sides. But either way, I get an answer then of a equals 16. So that's my 16 there. It's going to help just for the next bit. And that's my 16 there. All right. Using this value of A, calculate an estimate for the interquartile range of this data. If we add up our frequencies, we'll see what it all adds up to. So 5 plus 9 plus 27 plus 14 plus 17. And that comes in to 72. So the median would be at 36. And that means the lower quartile, or Q1 as you sometimes call it, will be 18. And then Q3 is going to be at 54. So Q1 is going to be the 18th one. So 5 and 9 here take me to 14. And so it's going to be in this group here. And it's going to be four, the fourth one in. So it's 4 27ths of the way through 18 to 25 which gap then is going to be 9 plus then the 16 so it's going to be 16 plus 4 20 sevenths of 9 put that into your calculator you get 17 and a third the upper quartile or q3 we're going to call it so that's 54 we're looking for here that's 14 that i think takes me down to 41 
and that takes me then to so 41 plus 14 is going to be then kind of 55 that will take me through so i want almost all the way through that so i want 13 fourteenths of the way through this group here so it's going to be 25 plus 13 fourteenths of the way through this group here and the size of that group then is five um, so that would be 29.643 we want the interquartile range 29.643 take away 17 and the third and that gives us an interquartile range then of 12.3